So we're delighted to have former Shamrock Rovers striker Carl Shepherd with us this evening. Carl, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks, McNary. Yourself? That's good. Not too bad at all. We're reflecting, probably can't believe that it's it's 10 years since the, the 2011 season at Shamrock Rovers with the Europa League and the league title, but which was your first season at Shamrock Rovers. Can I ask maybe, what was it like coming into the dressing room from Goa United? And it was a Shamrock Rovers dressing room that had, that had won the league in, in 2010. Yeah, it was a bit daunting, to be honest. I came in as someone who came from, as you said, Galway United, a team who was struggling and I was sort of a, a big fish in a small pond there. And when you come to Shamrock Rovers and you realise the size of the club and the players that you're up against in your positions, your Gary Twiggs, even Gary McKay, Billy Denny, all these brilliant players that were at the club. And I'm looking at it and that's probably a bit of taken back at first. And it probably took me maybe the first four or five, six weeks in pre-season to kind of go, you know what, I deserve to be here. I need to sort of just realise that and I suppose show what I can do rather than sort of almost tiptoeing around these lads. And the Satanta Cup was an early competition that season. It's it's one that has not been played these days, but uh, it kind of gave you an opportunity. You scored a lot of goals and I think in the, the semi-final you scored in, in both legs and it was an early trophy for, for you and your career at Rovers uh, beating Dundalk in the final 2-0 in Tala. Yeah, it was. It was a, at the time, it was a great competition for me because, as I mentioned, it probably took me a little bit longer than I'd have liked to break into the, I suppose, the team and even to establish myself within the squad. But the Santa Cup was great for that because that's really where I was given my opportunity. And from there, I was able to, I suppose, break into there. We went on to win it and I scored a lot of goals on the way. And I suppose that's what really, I suppose, showed Michael O'Neill that, you know, I'm ready to play. And thank, thankfully for the Santa Cup, I was able to have the opportunity and the platform to show what I could do. And you mentioned Michael O'Neill there, obviously a very strong personality, won you know, two league titles at, at Shamrock Rovers, but went on to, to great success with, with Northern Ireland and even now in club football. What was it like uh, playing under him? Yeah, look, he's the best manager I ever had. He was unbelievable. I think anyone who works with him will just say how detailed he is. He's, he's fantastic. He's brilliant. I wouldn't be surprised if we... I know we have Stephen Rice, who's already, I suppose, come out of that group, who's gone into coaching and management. But anyone who's worked with Michael will just have such a great insight. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a fair few more lads who come out of it going into the coaching route or management just because of they had the experience of working under him. So they know how good he is. And he's just so, I suppose, detailed. He doesn't leave any, I suppose, stone unturned when it comes to a game. And when you look at that Shamrock Overs team, one thing we certainly were was very organised. And the, one of the centre points of the, the season was the, the playoff win in, in Belgrade. You'd actually been injured and you'd, you hadn't played an awful lot. I think maybe that might have been your first game back uh, when it got to the playoff round in the Europa League. Yeah, I had just been out with, a, with I suppose, what at the time was a, a slightly scary injury that I had. Uh, I suppose an extra pathway in my heart burnt out. And uh, I suppose, look, the club were fantastic at the time. They not only looked after everything in terms of the surgery and finding the best doctors and everything like that and best surgeons, but they also hid it from the media. They said I had an ankle injury and it's them little things that don't go, I suppose, I suppose don't be forgotten very quickly on my end. Anyway, I realised that the club protected me as much as they could and then to come back into a game where I suppose it, it meant so much for not just Shamrock Rovers and Shamrock Rovers fans, but Irish football in general to go on and to qualify for the Europa League I suppose it was a real uh, it was a really really big night in, in Irish football and uh, certainly for myself it was just unbelievable to come back in from such a long time out to, into a game with that intensity to I suppose it was great that I was able to at least show what I could do and had I suppose a, an impact on the game when I came on Yeah you came off the bench and you won the penalty kick were you tempted to try and elbow Stephen O'Donnell out of the way and take the spot kick? <laughs> No, not at all. Jeez, my nerves are shot alone just watching Stevie. I, in fairness to him, I don't know how he had the, the composure to just relax himself and to go on and score. But I think you could see, even even now when I think of his celebration, it brings a smile to my face because once he scored, then his celebration was, oh my God, what's, what have we just done? It, I think it dawned on everyone that not only were we huge, I suppose, massive outsiders in the game, but at that moment, I suppose it dawned on us that, geez, we're going to do this. It, it's in our hands now. And it was some atmosphere in the stadium. It was interesting 
Pico Lopez was playing for Cape Verde in the very stadium uh, this weekend against the yeah. Brazilian Olympic side. Uh, didn't mm. seem to be too many spectators there. I presume it's behind closed doors. But that night in in Belgrade, it was a it was a packed stadium. You know, they've a their fan base are pretty notorious, so it was it was quite the atmosphere. Yeah, it was. I remember going out for a warm up and just thinking this place is bouncing. It's unbelievable. And I suppose the good thing for me was that at my age, I was very young and naive that I almost didn't think twice about it then as soon as the game got going. I know, I'd say if I was maybe now, in my, I suppose maybe 29, 30, whatever age, I suppose if you're a bit later on in your career, maybe have a little bit more fear. But when you're young, you just, I suppose you don't hold anything back. And I do remember that it was fantastic, obviously, to come on in the game and you could feel the atmosphere and it almost got you going a little bit more. But so it was a very big thing that for us as a team was at the end, they actually stood on and clapped us, booed their own team off and then clapped us. So that was it. That was obviously a, a very nice thing that they done for us. And it was something that, again, it, it almost made the night an, an extra bit special knowing that, you know, we've actually won over their fans because of the way we've played. And I suppose the attitude and the grit and determination that we showed in our play too. And it set up the first League of Ireland side, as you said, to play in the, the Europa League. Um, like some of the standout memories for any Rovers fan looking back and definitely will be for you will be the game in Pauk and you scored a goal again their their fans are pretty similar to to Partizan I think there might even be a link up the atmosphere that night was something incredible and and you got a, a great header to to get the equaliser Rovers couldn't quite hang on to to get a point but how do you reflect on that match in particular? Yeah you you'd think that I suppose at, at 19 to I suppose, start a Europa League game up front and to score, you'd be delighted and you'd have great memories of the game. And it was a game that I, I probably played one of my best matches for Shamrock Rovers in, but I'm still heartbroken when I think of that game because we should have got our point in that game. That was a game where we, we had chances to not only go on and get, a, as I said, get a point, but we had chances to go on and win it. And we were really, really in that game. And Varanya, I think, stepped up and scored a crack of a goal, but... I suppose for the first 20 minutes of that game, we were a little bit nervy. And if we weren't, then we were dead. I suppose if we settled into the game a bit quicker, I feel like that was the game where we should have went on and took not only one point, but three. Yeah, maybe one that got away. Some of the other games that stand out um, were the playing in the snow right at the end in, in December, yeah. the very last game and, and a last away game. And then you got a chance to play against Spurs in Tala which everyone remembers, maybe Harry Kane even remembers, it was his first <laughs> game for game for Spurs. The result didn't go Rovers' way that night, but they were probably some of the other games that, that stand out for you from, from that uh, group stage. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever feel as cold as training in Kazan. I think it was minus 15 that day, and even the day of the game, I was just thinking, like, how are we going to be able to play in this? But obviously, look, we, we actually went out and played and had a decent enough performance. Again, it was another one that, Remember, I think Ken O'Man hit the bar and we've had a few chances that night where I think one of our goals we gave away was very sloppy and we just looked back at it and thought, you know what, if we if it goes in, it makes it 2-2 and we could have just went on to, again, hold out. But look, it wasn't to be, but some special memories going out to, to Russia to play in freezing conditions and then obviously to play against a star-studded Spurs team that has players, as you say, at the time you're going to be saying this, this striker looks a pretty good player, but he goes on to be possibly one of England's possible greatest ever strikers. So it was, uh, it's one you look back on fondly and even just the atmosphere around the place and everything about it really made you feel like a, I suppose, a complete professional player. And sometimes in the League of Ireland, you don't really feel that, but on them nights, you certainly do. They're, they're very big nights. I suppose every League of Ireland player looks forward to European nights. And when you were playing in the group stages, you were obviously competing in the in the league. Trying Rovers were trying to retain the title, and and towards the end of the season, there was a real critical game in Bray where Rovers were training late, but you got you got two goals and it really set Rovers on the way to to cement the league title um, in UCD. I think a couple of weeks a couple of weeks later. Yeah, that game meant a heck of a lot to me. Again. At that moment in the season, I had been coming back from obviously the heart operation and then I probably struggled slightly to get my form. And then it was that game that turned everything around for me because just before that, I think we played Bowes and we 
drew it might have been one one at home in a I suppose a lackluster performance and I didn't come on that day and myself and Jim Jilton had a huge bust up in the dressing room I suppose going into going, uh, coming out of the Bows game and if you, if, I remember and even now looking back at it, if you see my celebration after the first goal, you probably thought, geez, that's a bit of an over-exaggeration of a celebration there. But I had so much anger and frustration, even my second goal up there, that I took no joy out of scoring, but it was just pure determination of saying, you know what, I'm going to show you to, I suppose, to Jim Agilton at the time. And then obviously, I suppose, look, it was uh, something that I took into the rest of the season. I probably played my best football there from there on in. And the final league game of the season was was home to uh, Galway United. It was kind of a big celebration, and you got the the trophy presentation. Uh, uh, Tala isn't quite like Wembley, but you do get to kind of walk up the steps, and there is that kind of uh, the way they've done it differently, maybe now in, in recent uh, seasons. But that kind of trophy presentation and the the hard work it was a great reward for what was put in across that you know amazing season. Yeah, it was. And look, we were up against a very good Sligo team that year. That, that Sligo team was, again, star-studded from Joey and Doe, Richie, Ryan. They had fantastic players and they really put it up to us that year. But look, to go up, as you said, to, to be able to lift a trophy in front of a full stadium. And I suppose it was, uh, there was a huge atmosphere around the club at that time as we did just qualify for Europe. So it, it was just a, a really special moment. And I, I look back at it, I suppose, now going maybe I took it slightly for granted. I should have maybe hung on to the trophy a little bit longer at each celebration. I should have done this, this and this. But again, it is uh, it is something that I look back on now and go, they were fantastic memories. And one such, anytime I meet up with anyone from that squad, it's instantly what we speak about. It was, I remember them nights in Belgrade and it was just an amazing night, really. And you had a very successful spell with Cork City later on in your career. You won a couple of FAI Cup medals and, and a double in the league. So do you have like those medals and the Rovers medals somewhere in the house or are they tucked away? Yeah, so they were tucked away in a box until I I suppose I stopped playing because, again, I was one that I didn't really like to look back on what I'd done. And it's look, it's nice now that I'm, I'm just going to, I suppose, have them up in a, I suppose, maybe, maybe not the hallway, but a back room in the house that, over the next couple of weeks and months, I'll be, I suppose, sorting them out going, you know what, I'll put them up on display because, again, it's something that I'm very proud of. Look, it was uh, a lot of hard work went into, I suppose, not just myself, but all my teammates went into any trophies or, I suppose, cups that I won that it's always nice to look back on. And just even if I walk into a room and see the Shamrock Rovers medal or the Cork City medals, they instantly bring back memories of different matches or different nights, even the nights after games, I was tended to be special special nights and so it's great memories to have that's great to hear listen thanks a million for talking us through that car really appreciate it no worries cheers my car